Lots of living on a boat is nothing about sailing. It's about keeping the boat going and maintaining it in a, in a good seaworthy condition. So this video is about some of the work that we have had to do in order to maintain Tess Bess um, in, her, in her seaworthy state. So I hope you enjoy it. There's a big cost in taking your boat out of the water for a clean, cleaning the bottom, changing anodes, that kind of thing. Uh, but if there's no major work to be done, then it's it's a lot of expense. Um, in warmer climates, people tend to just get in the water and clean the bottoms themselves. Um, it's not so simple in Shetland. But there is a guy now who comes and he has a, a, a special power tool uh, that has a kind of like a force that kind of pushes it onto the bottom of the boat um, and a revolving brush that cleans it. So he's here now working on our boat. So and he's just started up this business in Shetland. So it'd be interesting to see how he does. But uh, it's a nice, nice little job he's got.
definitely, definitely. I think that that would be good because yeah, the more more people that know about it, the better. Because then I can get the rates down for everybody. Mm. If I'm here doing two or three boats, you know, it's cheaper for everybody yeah, that's, yeah, that I'm here for rather than just small person. You can see just how clean the bottom is. He has done a really good job. Uh, very impressive machine. Uh, he also changed the anodes for me while he was here. Uh, so that's another job done. And uh, a lot, a lot, lot cheaper than lifting her out. Um, so yeah, uh, a, a success. And I will definitely be using him again. Last year in Svalbard, we developed a leak uh, at the bearing of our coolant circulation pump uh, on the main engine. Um, Svalbard is not a place that I wanted to start stripping water pumps out. So we looked for a, a solution to get us back to um, Norway, um, where we could decide uh, if we were gonna take that any further. Um, so the solution that we came up with was to depressurize the system uh, and the way we did that was in the in the filler cap we put some a little loop of string through this valve so this is a small valve in the middle of our filler cap um, that allows negative pressure it allows air to get into the tank when it cools but then it pressurizes to stop um, that pressure coming out as the as the uh, the coolant heats up so what we did was we just put a little bit of string through that valve which kept that valve open uh, and it meant that the filler still went on and stopped spill spillage but 
it didn't pressurize the system which meant that it didn't force water out through the through the bearing and this is the new pump it wasn't blue when it arrived it was just a uh, bare metal but we've primed it and we've given it a coat of paint so it uh, matches the color of the engine or close to it and also should stop it getting uh, getting rusty too quickly uh, the bearing in here uh, is where we were getting leak from the one that's on the engine i think this one has got a slightly different design and it has a little telltale hole here so if this one does start to leak um, this is where we should see the the water coming out and looking down into the engine space so that's the pulley and our our water pump is behind that pulley so quite a bit of the stuff at the front of the engine come away um, to give us access to that so that's what we're going to be doing today fitting this new water pump Okay, so uh, we're looking into the water jacket around the cylinder that does the cooling. We're worth having a little look while we've got this access. Uh, and we can see there's, there's a little bit of corrosion, but nothing major. So that means that we probably don't have any salt water getting mixed with the, the fresh water coolant. Um, another thing that's worth doing, uh, I'm just going to stick my finger in there. And go as far down as I can reach and I can feel the bottom and I'm not feeling feeling any kind of sedimentary deposits down there uh, nothing on my finger which would suggest that the water jacket is quite clear uh, and there's no kind of build up of rubbish in there so that's all looking pretty good um, so we're going to need a new uh, gasket for here and uh, and I need a new stud because one of the studs is broken. So let's see what we can do with that. This is the old pump and it, it is still working. Uh, it's still working fine as a pump. Uh, unfortunately, we can see here. So this is the this is the telltale and we can see this is where we've had water running out um, because the seal has gone on the shaft unfortunately these are press fitted so there's no way to dissemble it um, so it's not a case of taking it apart and replacing the seal uh, need to replace the whole pump and there's new pump and all pump together so while I've got access to this amount of the engine um, the other thing I've done I've opened the the, uh, the cool and jacket drain um, and I've just flushed a lot of clean water through just to uh, to clean any sediment out of the bottom of the water jacket um, and that has worked quite well there's some uh, grubby water in the bucket so but not too bad not not very much sediment in there at all which I'm very pleased about um, I've also managed to get a, a long kind of pipe cleaner brush and I've poked that in and around as much of the engine engine water jacket as I can just to kind of free up as much sediment um, just to clean it out just to kind of get as much as much of that sediment out as possible so now you can see I've just poured some water in there and I now have clean water coming out of the out of the drain so that's telling me that the the water jacket now is as clean as clean as I can get it at this point yeah so this is well, it's a broken bolt. Um, the the end the end is broken off. Um, it was on this bottom right hand corner, and it also holds the end of the adjuster for the alternator. So, I'll see if we can find a replacement for that. One of the issues uh, having an old Ford engine 
is the threads on all of the engine bolts are all Imperial. So they're either British Standard Fine or British Standard Whitworth. Um, not so easy to get though. You can see here the broken bolt. So this is what I need to replace. Um, and this is what it should be looking like. But uh, because it's Whitworth, um, I don't have any. Uh, so the boat did come with a box full of Whitworth piece bits and pieces here um, But the only one we have is Is quite a bit smaller uh, And it won't it won't actually fit so I'm gonna have to go into town and see if I can track down a Whitworth bolt That's the new pump fitted. Not so easy to see now. And that's the new stud that I had that I made. So I cut a slot in the end of it so I could screw it in with a screwdriver and then put a knot on it. Um, so that's that's now in place. So that should be it. All done. Today we're going to service the bilge pump. And there it is. That's where it lives. Right in the very bottom of the boat. In all of the dirty water and all of the crud that ends up down there. It's an automatic pump. It keeps the water out. And also can be used as an emergency bilge pump. It's, uh, it's quite a decent pump. Pumps quite a lot of water. So it has a small cover on it, which is just to stop the switch getting damaged. And then inside there's this automatic switch. Uh, when the water comes up, it floats, clicks, that turns the pump on, pump pumps water out, this goes down again. Uh, and it also turns on a small alarm uh, when it comes up. And that's over here. And the alarm, when it goes off, So that's the alarm that lets us know that the bilge pump is working. But we tested it yesterday and it wasn't putting out very much, much water. Um, so it has been in for four years. So I thought I'd pull it out and have a look and see what the problem was. So and what we discovered when I lifted it out and cleaned it don't know if you can see in there but that's the hole where the water goes and it is just full full of crud because um, it lives in the bottom of the boat and that's where everything ends up water spilt tea crumbs dog hairs you name it it ends up eventually in the bottom of the boat and over the years it has built up in the pump so I have a spare pump, which I'm going to have a look at either replacing the pump altogether or just cleaning it out. That's the pump loose. So let's have a look inside. See what we find. Uh, not so bad really A 
little bit of dog hair, a little bit of fluff. Other than that, it's pretty clean. Although it is clean, the bearing doesn't feel so good. I can feel it rumbling a little bit. So as I've got a spare pump, I'm just going to swap the pump over. And new pump fitted. So I'm just going to put it back together and get it installed. That's it finished and ready to go back in. And just to protect me from it and from falling down there, we have this grate that goes over. And that's it covered. So that is the bilge in Tess Bess. I hope you enjoyed that journey into Tess Bess's more intimate parts. Um, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to see some more, there'll definitely be more to come.